Hi, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and welcome to another motivational word for the day. Today's premise of this word is going to be basically about God's protection and provision. Um, God made a, a very strong distinction between his people and between the Egyptians when he was causing the plagues, when he was doing all this to show his power and his glory. Basically, he wanted to show the impetus of the Egyptian gods. He wanted to show they're all a sham. They have no power. They have no strength. They have no ability to deliver, to save, to, to do anything, of course. The Egyptians had the, the god of the Nile. They had the god of the sun. They had their cattle god. They had all these gods, but, of course, God caused darkness. God caused the cattle to die. God caused the Nile to be turned to blood. But during all these events... Nothing happened to the to the the Hebrews. He preserved them. He kept them safe when all the lice and everything and and gnats and blood sucking fleas or whatever it was came out and was totally just really devastating the Egyptian people. Nothing happened to the Hebrews. And then finally, the crescendo, the the big huge day when the the firstborn child and firstborn of every cattle was to die. We know no harm came to the to the Hebrews, and God said, "Hey, take a take an innocent lamb and spread spread his blood over the door of your house, over the two doorposts and the lintel. And when I pass through, I'll see that blood, and I'll pass over you." And we know the cry went up in Egypt: the firstborn of every child died. But of course, the children of Israel were safe. Now, what does this get into? Get in, get in. It gets into God's ability to show His power and also to um, preserve His people. We know right now there's a time of great, intense uh, sickness in the world with COVID nineteen, and you have to ask yourself if you're a Christian, you have to really come to the point of acknowledging God's power. Now, in the Bible, it said. They will have a form of godliness, but they will deny the power thereof. Now, to me, that's like having a car with no gas in it. Or that's like coffee without caffeine. It's just pointless. But there are churches, there are Christians who just basically, they have a Bible, they go to church, but they don't believe in anything supernatural. They don't believe in miracles anymore. They don't believe in... In, in any of that. They don't believe in praying in tongues. They don't believe in prophecy. They don't believe in laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. But as you can see, God was very eager to show himself out during the, the Hebrew times. All of this was a display of God wanting to say, hey, I'm real. I'm here. Your, your gods in Egypt are 100% fake, but I'm here. I'm real. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my power. So basically, in this time of COVID-19, all you have to do, and this isn't some wacky thing saying, hey, God's cursing the bad people and going to protect the good people because everyone's sinned, right? But what we need to do is we need to pray for God's protection, just like the Hebrews were completely protected through all of that scourge. And I'm not even saying this is a scourge. This is quite most likely somebody... Uh, ate a bat or mixed bats with other animals in a wet market and it produced this or some people say it's a biological weapon uh there is actually a biological facility in wuhan uh maybe connect the dots on that i don't know but regardless i believe this can be a time for your faith to say god is real and he can preserve me through all of this, we know Psalm 91 says that you will not fear the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that goes by night. A thousand may fall at one side, ten thousands at another side, but no harm will come you because you've made the Lord your shelter, your rock, your your strong tower, your hiding place. Blessed is the man who, who trusts in the Lord. Okay, so that is what we as Christians need to do during these times. We need to say, I'm going straight into my God. I'm doing everything they're saying. I'm social distancing. I'm uh, not touching my eyes or my nose. I'm washing my hands. I'm following every prescribed medical guidance known to man and everything given in these times. 
But I'm also going to take it deeper than that. I'm going to my God and I'm saying, God, show yourself strong. Preserve me during this time. Show your show yourself. You know, and also we can pray that this all ends, and I'm sure it will. You know, when the plagues hit Egypt, Moses would go and pray and God would stay his hand. Um, there is one thing in the Bible that I don't understand completely at all. <clears throat> it was a my wife asked me, she's like, oh, David only sinned once. He had that one thing he did against God. And I'm thinking, actually, I know there's two big things he did. Of course, he took Bathsheba. But then he wanted to number the people. And I don't know why that angered God, but it said in the Bible, I can look it up and find it for you, that um, that uh, Satan had persuaded David to number the people. And I don't know why or how. But he did this, and it said it angered God. And God came to him and said, I'll give you three choices. You know, many people can fall by the sword, this, that, and the other. And Moses and David said, I want to fall on your mercy. You're a merciful God. So God went out and sent a plague. And it says that this plague came out, and it was destroying and just laying people to waste. And then, then David at one point could see the angel causing the scourge and causing this plague. It's a real interesting read. It kind of, oddly enough, ties into our times. We have this plague. I don't know why. You know, I don't believe it's some plague from the book of Revelation or some sign of the end times like everybody is saying because, I mean, we've already had the signs of the end times. We had the Hebrew nation spread apart, spread all over the world and then gathered back. We have false preachers, we have earthquakes in various places, famines, wars, false teachers, you know, you have all those things pointing to, to Christ coming back. The only thing we're really missing is, you know, the Antichrist, the son of perdition to be revealed, and, you know, we're sure Christ will come back then. But anyways, I don't believe this is some big revelation thing. But it's just interesting, I read that, and then God said, all right, enough enough's enough. And he, David prayed, he made a sacrifice and God said, okay, enough's enough. And he stopped it. So I believe too with this, God's going to say enough's enough, especially if people will pray to him, you know, and seek him out and say enough's enough, you know, for whatever reason, maybe no reason at all, this has happened, but just can you intervene for us? And I'm sure God will. But I want you to pray during this time that God will make a distinction upon you as a Christian, that he will just set his love, his favor, his protection. God didn't let any of the plagues fall on the, the Hebrews that hit the Egyptians. Um, he preserves his people. And, and it's Psalm 91, that's, that's the preservation of God. It just speaks about how he will not let any harm come to those who are the apple of his eye. He'll preserve them. So take delight in that. Um, you know, pray to God for his protection, for his, for his guidance. We know that, um, that Paul was preaching the gospel and as he was preaching the gospel and he was bit by a poisonous snake and he didn't die. I don't recommend going out and getting bit by a poisonous snake, but I just want to say that God has power over sickness and disease. And it's clearly written all through the Bible that, that he makes a distinction between those that serve him and love him and those that that, that deny him. So it's a good time right now to really get in there close to God and say, hey, God, make me an example of your protection, of your preservation. Because uh, we know in the time when all the plagues hit the Egyptians, nothing, not one bit of it harmed the Israelis who are God's chosen people. So pray that God will preserve you during this time and just show his hand strong on your life. I pray Psalm 91 over you. I guess we could read that psalm in closing on this uh, very topic. Let's go. Psalm 91. It's a very good psalm. Psalm 91. Let's go ahead and read Psalm 91. security of the one who trusts in God. That's how they have it labeled in this Bible. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and at rest in the shadow of the Almighty, the shadow uh, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler 
and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. You will not be afraid of the terror at night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but no danger will come near you. You will only look with your eyes and witness the repayment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge. Even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. There it is. Nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels in regard of you to protect you and defend and guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not even strike your foot on a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample underfoot because he has set his love on me. Therefore, I will save him. I will set him on high because he knows my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and I will let him see my salvation. So you see Psalm 91 lays out very clearly those who have set their love and trust on God will not in any way despair. They'll be preserved from sickness, death, destruction, everything. It's your confidence. No, God is a strong tower over you right now in these uncertain times. You have a certainty, a certain faith that you will come through on the other side unscathed because you set your hope on the Lord. Thank you for tuning in and just know that you're preserved, you're protected. You are completely safe in the arms of the Lord who you trust and he will not allow any evil to befall those who put their confidence in him.